Did you know that the food you eat might contain plasticizers? We're talking about chemicals used to make plastic more flexible and durable. Plasticizers including the most common ones found in food, phthalates and bisphenols, such as bisphenol A or BPA, serve a crucial role in plastic production. But how do they end up in our food you might wonder? They can enter our food through materials and packaging that come in contact with it. Environmental contamination is another route where these chemicals can seep into the food chain from polluted soil or water. So whether it's your favorite fast food or a can of peaches, plasticizers might be on the menu unbeknownst to you. It's clear that these chemicals are more prevalent in our food than we might have imagined. You might be surprised to learn which foods contain high levels of these plasticizers. Plasticizers, chemicals that enhance the flexibility and durability of plastic, have been detected in a startling variety of food samples. The usual suspects in this case are phthalates and bisphenols, especially bisphenol A, or BPA for short. These substances can find their way into our food through a number of avenues including food packaging, food contact materials, and even environmental contamination. Now let's take a look at some of the food products that have been found to contain high levels of these plasticizers. Supermarket staples like Del Monte sliced peaches and chicken of the sea pink salmon have shown significant levels of these chemicals. But it's not just supermarket goods that are affected. Fast food items such as Wendy's crispy chicken nuggets, a Chipotle chicken burrito, and a Burger King Whopper with cheese, have also been found to contain high levels of plasticizers. And here's a curveball. Even organic foods aren't exempt. Studies have found that organic products can contain just as high levels of phthalates as their non-organic counterparts. This is a stark reminder that the organic label doesn't guarantee a product is free from all forms of contamination. High molecular weight phthalates like DEHP and DINP are commonly used in PVC materials such as food packaging. Other replacement plasticizers that have made their way into the food supply include DEHA, DINCH, and DE8. The presence of these chemicals in our food is a cause for concern due to their potential health impacts. Disruption of the endocrine system, abnormal reproductive function, neurological harm, immune issues, and even tumor growth are all potential consequences of exposure to these substances. It's alarming to think that these chemicals can be found in such a wide range of foods we consume daily. Now you might be wondering, what does this mean for our health? And rightly so. Plasticizers, particularly phthalates and bisphenols, are not just simple additives in our food. They carry with them potential health risks that are a cause for concern. Firstly, these chemicals can disrupt our endocrine system. That's the system responsible for producing hormones that regulate metabolism, growth and development, tissue function and mood among other things. So any disruption to this system can lead to a host of health problems. Secondly, there's the issue of abnormal reproductive function. Several studies have found links between exposure to these chemicals and reproductive issues. This could range from decreased fertility to adverse pregnancy outcomes. It's a sobering thought that something as seemingly innocuous as a plastic food wrapper could potentially affect our ability to have children. But the potential health impact doesn't stop there. Neurological harm is another concern associated with these chemicals. The brain is a delicate organ, and any interference with its normal function can lead to serious consequences. Early life exposure to plasticizers has been associated with neurodevelopmental issues in children. Now, if that wasn't enough, recent research has also linked exposure to plasticizers to an increased risk for obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. These are some of the most prevalent health issues we face today, and the thought that our exposure to plasticizers could be contributing to these problems is certainly alarming. However, it's important to understand that these potential health risks are based on exposure levels. That means the more we're exposed to these chemicals, the higher our risk of experiencing these health impacts. And considering that plasticizers are found in a wide range of food samples, the potential for exposure is quite high. The potential health risks associated with these chemicals are certainly cause for concern. So, as we continue to unwrap our understanding of plasticizers and their effects on our health, it's clear that this is a topic we all need to be informed about. With all these risks, what is being done to protect us, you may wonder? Well, let's delve into the world of regulation and see what's happening on that front. The Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, currently permits the use of nine phthalates in food contact applications. Eight of these are allowed to be used as plasticizers, and one as a monomer. However, it's not all smooth sailing. The safety of these chemicals is still a hot topic of research and debate. For instance, studies have shown that even at permissible levels, long-term exposure to these chemicals can potentially lead to health issues. 
As a result, some manufacturers have started to take matters into their own hands. They're exploring the use of non-phthalate replacement plasticizers in commercial products. This is a proactive step towards mitigating the potential risks associated with traditional plasticizers, but it's not a complete solution. Some of these replacement plasticizers are also compounds of concern and have been linked to similar health risks. The situation is dynamic and evolving. The conversation around plasticizer safety is far from over. Consumer awareness and pressure can play a crucial role in driving stricter regulations and safer practices. While some steps are being taken to address this issue, it's clear that more research and potentially stricter regulations are needed. We need to continue to push for safer practices that prioritize our health above all else. So, what can we do to mitigate our exposure to these harmful chemicals? The reality is that plasticizers are pervasive in our environment, and completely avoiding them is nearly impossible. However, we can take concrete steps to reduce our exposure and safeguard our health. One of the most effective ways is by choosing fresh foods over processed ones. Processed foods often come in plastic packaging which can leach plasticizers into the food. Fresh fruits, vegetables and meats that are not pre-packaged are less likely to contain high levels of these chemicals. Next, we should be mindful of the materials we use for food storage. While convenient, plastic containers, especially those marked with recycling codes 3 or 7, may contain harmful plasticizers like BPA. Instead consider using alternatives like glass, porcelain, ceramic, or stainless steel containers for storing food. And remember, even if a plastic container is labeled as microwave safe, it doesn't guarantee that it won't leach chemicals when heated. Fast food is another major source of plasticizers. The packaging, the gloves used by food handlers, even the processing equipment, all have the potential to introduce these chemicals into our meals. Therefore, reducing our consumption of fast food can help lower our exposure. And finally, let's not forget the power of our voice as consumers. We can demand better regulations, more transparency from food companies about their packaging materials, and push for the development of safer alternatives to harmful plasticizers. While we can't entirely eliminate our exposure to these chemicals, we can certainly take steps to reduce it. Through informed choices and conscious habits we can help protect ourselves and our loved ones.